Hello, welcome to the Live to 110 podcast. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm your host, Wendy Myers, and I just had such a terrific week. I cannot even tell you. I have my book up on Amazon, and it's going to be published on April 29th, but it's available for pre-order on Amazon. And I also joined the Genius Network. It's Joe Polish's Genius Network, where entrepreneurs come together to help elevate each other and help each other out and increase and improve their business and just learn how to do all the things that you need to do to improve your business. So I'm just really honored. It's really been a dream of mine to join that group. And I finally have. It's very exciting. But today on the show, we have JJ Virgin. I'm really an admirer of hers. I just uh, love her work. I read her book, The Virgin Diet. And, uh, you know, several years ago when it first came out and it's a food elimination diet essentially and really, you know, learned a lot about the importance of eliminating foods, certain foods from your diet that can cause inflammation and weight gain. Really good book, highly recommend it. A lot of impeccable research behind it. But today we're going to be talking about her new book, Miracle Mindset. And when I first heard her on Sean Croxton's podcast, I heard her relay her story, just a heart-wrenching story of a hit-and-run accident that she uh, endured with her son and her son suffering a traumatic brain injury as a result and all the lessons that that taught her. And it's such a good podcast and just talks about the lessons that she learned and how she decided to put that into a memoir called Miracle Mindset and help other people rise to the challenge challenges in their life with with grace and with reduced stress and just live a more satisfying and and happy life and meeting their their goals so thrilled to have her on the show but before we get started please keep in mind that this podcast is not intended to diagnose or treat any disease or health condition and is not a substitute for professional medical advice the Live to 110 podcast is for informational purposes only and educational purposes. So please consult your healthcare practitioner before engaging in anything that we suggest today on the show. As I mentioned before, my book is coming out. It's called Limitless Energy, How to Detox Toxic Metals to End Exhaustion and Chronic Fatigue. I know so many of you out there are so tired and you're guzzling coffee and you're taking five hour energy or even prescription Adderall or Ritalin or other stimulants in a desperate attempt to get energy. Because there's so many things working against us today in our environment for energy production. And so I talk about the things that interfere in energy production in the book, namely toxic metals, arsenic, aluminum, tin, thallium, cesium, that poison enzymes that transport nutrients into our mitochondria. A lot of you guys that have been a regular listener have heard me talk about th these things quite a bit and kind of it's ingrained in your brain. Uh, but I talk about in the book solutions like taking certain supplements and, and doing you know certain detox protocols, the most effective ones, so that you can remove these metals interfering in your body's maximum capability to produce energy. And I'll talk about some other interesting concepts in the book as well, like bioenergetics and a lot of other interesting things that you can do that are really non-conventional that will help you to boost your energy so that you're not depending and living on stimulants. So as when, you know, I, I, I was, I've been on that roller coaster myself where I've been taking uh, coffee and uh, d uh, drinking, um, you know, or like taking stimulants and drinking coffee. I've taken fentermine diet pills before and, and stimulants. And uh, it's just this roller coaster that I, many of us find us on and it's not necessary. I want to help you to get you know, real energy, true energy, so that you don't need stimulants anymore. I'm actually to the point in my life now where I can't tolerate coffee. It's too strong because I have so much natural energy in my body that coffee just sends me through the roof. It's just too much. Unless I'm doing a coffee enema. I make an exception for coffee enemas. <laughs> but anyways, you can get my book on Amazon. Check it out. It's called Limitless Energy. You can get it right now, but it'll be available on Kindle and paperback April 29th. 
Our guest today is JJ Virgin. She's a celebrity nutrition and fitness expert, and she teaches clients how to lose weight and master their mindset so they can lead bigger, better lives. She's the author of four New York Times bestsellers, The Virgin Diet, The Virgin Diet Cookbook, JJ Virgin's Sugar Impact Diet, and JJ Virgin's Sugar Impact Diet Cookbook. Her memoir, Miracle Mindset, A Mother, Her Son, and Life's Hardest Lessons, explores the powerful lessons in strength and positivity that she learned after her son Grant was a victim of a brutal hit and run accident. JJ hosts the popular JJ Virgin Lifestyle Show podcast and regularly writes for the Huffington Post, Redale Wellness, and other major blogs and magazines. She's also a frequent guest on TV and radio and speaks at major events. In addition to her work with nutrition and fitness, JJ is also a business coach and founded the premier health entrepreneur event and community, the Mindshare Summit. I went last year. I'm going this year. I can't wait. It's fantastic. I highly recommend it. JJ, thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, I'm so glad to be here. So why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about your background and how you came to do the work that you do? So my background, I've always been into nutrition and fitness back from when I was a teenager. Uh, but somehow I went off to college on a theater scholarship, <laughs> little, little diversion. But it's amazing how everything kind of pulls together. Then I ended up being an English major, but I sort of started teaching aerobics in college. Um, and then I became a personal trainer. I was, it was me and Body by Jake way back, way back when. So I went off to grad school in exercise science, and then I kept studying nutrition, doctoral school, and and functional medicine. But what was interesting, and you know, it's like it's amazing how all of these things that you do in your life all can kind of coalesce, right? And you just you never know when you're going to need to have to pull them all out. Um, Along the way of doing all this graduate school and and being a nutritionist and a fitness expert, I also have been a big student of personal development. And my I had a mentor early on. My first real mentor in business and life um, was a big mindset mentor. That's what she did. She I kept wanting her to coach me on business and how to have a successful business, and she kept going back to mindset. And, you know, now I get that if you're going to run a business or actually do anything well in your life, it's going to all come down to your mindset. But at the time, I was like, just show me like what strategy I should use, (laughs) you know, and it's so clear that whether it's your health or your career or your relationships, there's definitely not a shortage of strategies out there, but uh, we'll never kind of outgrow our mindset. So that's the framework. I've been doing health for a couple decades now. And I've kind of, I always look at things and figure out how to take someone through their own personal discovery process. I'm super left brain. So it always starts with some way of self identifying and then going through a process so that you can connect the dots and create a workable solution for yourself. And so that was the setup for, you know, this book coming next because a lot of people look at what I'm, what I'm into now, this next book of a miracle mindset and go, that seems kind of off subject. I go, actually, it's, really the third pillar of health when you look at it, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, because your emotional IQ is so important. It's just is as important as working on your health. It has a huge impact on your health. Huge. So you have a, your new book coming out. is called Miracle Mindset. And it, it is, like you said, a bit of a departure from your diet and nutrition books that were both New York Times bestsellers. And so can you tell me what inspired your book, Miracle Mindset? Yeah, it was interesting. I've always written books based on what people asked me about. So I used to go around the country teaching a course called Weight Loss Resistance, and everyone would always ask about the food allergies, right? And back then, we weren't even calling them an intolerance. I'm like, it's not really an allergy, you know? And so that was the virgin diet. And then after I wrote that, it was like people wanted, they couldn't get over their sugar cravings. I'm like, all right, well, we've been looking at that wrong. So I wrote the Sugar Impact Diet. But when the virgin diet was getting ready to come out like literally a couple weeks before the book was coming out and just to set it up i had invested all of the book advance into getting the book out to the market i had borrowed money so i could do a public television show so i was like totally in deep and i'm the total financial support for my family so and i had kids 15 and 16. and it's a couple weeks before pub day and this is the craziest time in an author's life And my 16-year-old son 
is out on a walk and gets hit crossing the street. And uh, we, we don't know for sure. We estimate maybe 40 miles an hour and literally uh, left for dead in the street. This woman got out of her car, looked at him, gasped, and drove off. So he was airlifted to the local hospital, and um, we had him airlifted again to another hospital. But basically, I had to launch this book and be in the hospital with my son, of course. I'm not going anywhere, right, you know, while he's in a coma, and do all of this at the same time. And so... I kept getting asked, it's like the next question after, after the sugar one was like, how did you manage to do all of that? How did you manage to be there for your son while he was in a coma, help him, help him be 110%, which was my commitment to him standing there in the coma. I was like, Grant, you're going to be 110%. You'll see, this is, you're a warrior. Um, and I really kind of reflected back on how I'd managed to pull the last four and a half years out because traumatic brain injuries are a amazing thing to work through and I realized it really you know first I thought oh it was because I was so healthy and he was healthy and that's how we did it and it's like no that's not really it at all uh, the first night in the hospital they told us to let my son go that you know he'd never survive another airlift and we just had to let him go and we overruled the doctors and then the next day in the hospital I looked at Grant and I said you know you're going to be 110 percent which was a ridiculous statement First of all, because 110% doesn't exist. And second of all, because they didn't even think he was going to wake up. But um, so I really realized that it was the mindset that I had built over the years, because your mindset's a muscle, and had was working through in the hospital allowed my son to survive. So that's why I wrote the book. It's like, you know, once you realize that and you realize that those lessons, even though the story is super specific, the lessons that help me get through all of it are massively universal and you know heck they help my people in the weight loss world if they're stuck so they can pretty much help anyone in any part of their life yeah i've heard you tell that story before when i first heard you on a podcast and i've been kind of following you ever since and your story and i just i can't even imagine what you went through or the having that happen to my own child and i just no, com commend you for pulling through that. It's just, it's just mind boggling. It's been a, it's been a long struggle. And you know what? I still remember the, the day before it happened, I was at a workshop and they were teaching the hero's journey. And I was thinking, you know, that, you know, the story of like, what's your big struggle in life and your big hero's journey. And I'm like, I don't have one. <laughs> I was like, well, I got one, you know? Um, and I think that's a really key point because I've heard so many people say, oh my gosh, I can't imagine going through what you went through. And I actually don't want anyone ever to imagine it. It's really a parent's worst nightmare. But on the flip side, we know that we are going to be facing challenges. There's no question that we're going to have to handle stuff. And, you know, the, the fortuitous thing in all this was that I'd gone through tough stuff before. So it's like I've been in training for it. And that's really my key mission now with this book is, you know, whether someone's just stuck, I hear so many people going, Oh, I'm just stuck. I feel stuck, right? Or they feel like they can't handle the stuff coming up, they're in overwhelm or just fear, or they just, you know, they're what I call comfortably uncomfortable, they know could they could have a bigger life, but they're like, right. Um, you know, that's, that's all mindset, it can be developed. And it's actually, it's not easy, but it's a lot simpler than people realize to do. And when you have, you know, terrible tragedies happen in your life, you rise to the occasion, you don't have any choice. So it's better if you right. have a skill set in place to help you do that, be maximally successful. So tell us what exactly is the miracle mindset? Like, why does our mindset matter so much? You know, I, I've been um, now kind of obsessed with this one as I started to look at it. Because again, it came from this question. People were like, how did you do that? And I'm like, how did I do that? Right. And because I was an autopilot, as you can imagine. And you said an important thing, like these things happen and you step up. We're never better than when we're challenged. And uh, it's an important thing for parents to hear because I think we need to really make sure we're we're letting our kids, you know, be challenged and not make it too easy on them. Um but I started to really look at people around me who I admire, who inspire me. And I realized that every person you meet who's really doing cool stuff out there in the world has gone through some serious 
struggles, you know, <laughs> they've gone through it. And so I always think success leaves clues. So it was like, okay, what are the common factors? Because once you accept that your mindset's a muscle, because there's two mindsets that um, this psychologist Carol Dweck from Stanford did this work. And she said, you know, you either have a fixed mindset, which means you're a victim, life happens to you, there's nothing you can do. So once we choose that that's not what we want, right, then you have a growth mindset, what I call then a miracle mindset, this mindset that you can develop. And so what I did was look at all the different people who I who I am inspired by, and went, what are the key attributes that everyone seems to share? And that's what I built the book and the documentary around. That's what the lessons are all about and exercises. So it's being courageous. And this is a big one because I feel like there's this emphasis on being fearless. And you could be fearless. That means you're avoiding fear. (laughs) You know, like we're going to feel fear. There's no I feel fear every single day. Gosh, this putting this this book and documentary out in the world and like pulling the kimono back on my whole life, like talk about fear. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) What was I thinking? Um, So it's being courageous. It's, it's thinking abundantly, which is really being open to possibilities. I love that line, your limitations will be your life, you know, become your life. Um, And so really, you know, when Grant was in the hospital, looking at him and saying, Oh, he's going to be 110%. And then taking action, um, you know, especially in our world of health practitioners, you hear so many people going, oh, I need another degree. I need to take another workshop. Right. It's like, no, no, no. Just get into action. Just do living in the present, being able to really recognize the great things that happen every day. You know, one of the things I've realized from all this is that there are little miracles going on all day long. We just don't see them. We're just too busy. So that's a hugely important one being resilient you know the studies show now that people who are resilient are happier and more successful and you can you can develop it which is super cool um asking for help and really being collaborative having a great community that you're surrounded with that has made a massive difference um for me in my life this for for years and years and years it's kind of i call it the family you choose And they all rallied around me during this time and then being able to forgive. So that's what I that's what I classify the miracle mindset as the those the sum of those attributes, which really basically make you unstoppable. Yeah, I I love that you talk about resilience, because so I think so many people can get kind of stuck and can become inflexible or have to do it my way or I'm right. And Mm -hmm. it's so important to be flexible and to be able to go with the flow because like when you have a business or a relationship never quite goes as planned (laughs) yeah and you have to be resilient and make make changes uh, very very quickly so now you obviously learn these lessons as a result of this tragic accident uh, that happened in your life so what about people who are facing problems that you know aren't about their health so does their miracle mindset um does that apply to their challenges as well you know it's it's been interesting because I always like to when I'm putting a program together I kind of create a hypothesis right and then I test it so I decided once I was going to do this I thought you know I'm going to create a program to be able to teach people how to develop their own miracle mindset with the hypothesis that when you up level your mindset it will impact every area of your life and the converse is true too, right? If you accept that your mindset's a muscle, if you're not growing it, it's shrinking, and that will impact every area of your life. So that would be your money and your business and your relationships and your health. So I got 150 people to go through this with me the first time, and I'm like, I'm not sure what it's gonna be, you know, <laughs> brave souls. And I had them rate their happiness in those four areas and write down their big goals in those four areas before we started. Then we didn't, we put them away said, all I want you to do now is we're going to work on exercises in each of those areas, things to build your courage and build your resilience and help you learn how to forgive. And then we went back and we rated how they were in those four categories, their their level of satisfaction. And we redid their goals. And what I had hypothesized absolutely came true. And it's so cool that even though they weren't working on things over there and they hadn't set goals, all of a sudden, their levels of satisfaction in all areas of their life go up 
and their goals get bigger. Like they are now open to bigger possibilities. They see a bigger life for themselves, right? They're not stopped by fear or their beliefs. They're not good enough. And so really, I've been putting this into my my health programs for years. I always start people with what's your why, what's your big purpose? Um, but I'd say this needs to really go on top of anything that you're doing in your life because you can't outrun your mindset, right? I think the biggest challenge out there is I couldn't find a way to quantify it, so I created a scorecard and assessment for it. And I had to have very specific exercises that were, you know, everything to me, I always have to have some science behind things. I have to be able to measure it. And then I have to have ways that you can improve it that are easy, time efficient, right? Because <laughs> that's that's our life. I see a lot of these things are like, okay, well, you're going to go to a quiet, silent meditation retreat for a week. I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> that, would, that. that would be suicide for me. <laughs> like, oh, I know. Could you imagine? Like, I went to one and they're like, okay, you cannot have your phones, your this. Your, I'm like, I can't, no, I'm not doing that, you know, for a week. But, you know, can I add in something every single day for a couple minutes? Sure. Like, if that's going to move the needle, yes, I'll do that. So that's what I set out to do. And, and it's interesting because just in my health community, I saw people who had gotten stuck and or started gaining the weight back. And all of a sudden, it's just not an issue anymore. Like, lose the weight go to the next level in their health, but they didn't even focus on it. So yeah. it's pretty crazy. So is there a specific uh, time that you can point to when you feel like your mindset really made the difference, uh, really changed the outcome for you and your son? Yeah. And, it, you know, I believe in life that you get what you expect. And one of the things that I've done my whole adult life is I create a big, scary goal that always seems like a big stretch to me that I can't see how I'm going to get to. And then I write it down and then I tell everybody because then I figure I'm committed, right? Because, you know, I can't go back on my word. And so with this one, it was the second day it was, let's see, really the first morning in the ICU and he'd gotten through surgery. He would made it through the airlift. He would made it through the surgery. Of course, now the neurosurgeons told us he was never going to wake up, you know, so there was that. But I, I was not listening to them. Um, and I was holding on to his one hand. Everything else was bandaged. He had road rash down one side and glass and gravel sticking out and tubes. And But I'm holding on to his one hand. And um, I said, Grant, you're going to be 110 percent. This is going to be the best thing that ever happened to you. We've got this. We're all together in this. I'm pulling all the best resources in and we will fight for you. You're a warrior and we are going to do this. And I just from that moment on, it was like, what do we need to do to get him to 110 percent? And here's the thing. He is in a coma. The, the neurosurgeons are like, we don't think he'll wake up. We don't know if he's going to ever wake up or live, right? Because a lot of people with traumatic brain injuries are going to die, especially right there in that coma. He had a, I mean, he had lacerated kidneys, 13 fractures. He had massive problems going on. But I also knew that he was still alive, so I had hope. That's all I was paying attention to. So what I did was I started looking for every little teeny bit of proof that he was progressing, which it was as simple as things like his eyelids fluttered, which one of the first things that happened was we had um, one of my doctor friends from Cedar sinais brain trauma unit came in with some essential oils because it was like one of the first things that he could respond to. So even though he's in a coma, he's wiggling his nose and toes and fluttering his eyelids when we bring these essential oils in. So anything like that, I'm like, okay, we've got that. You know, now what do I need to do next? And I would just build on these things, little 1% by 1%. But just the attitude, I mean, think of the difference between, okay, I want my son to live versus I want my son to live an extraordinary life, better than before the accident. He's going to be 110%. And I will tell you, it's been four and a half years. And up until like two or three months ago, it was like, I was like, every once in a while, I kind of go, huh. You know, because it wasn't looking very, it wasn't looking like we were getting to 110 um, percent, which we are now getting in a lot of ways. We're, we're there. Um, but you just got to ask that question and stick with it. Right. There's always a way. Yeah. So how is he doing today? So I have done 
I told him, you know, you're going to be the poster child from recovering from a traumatic brain injury. You know, there's 17 million of them a year in the U.S. And they're just like, they're the silent epidemic because you can't tell. You'd, you'd see my son and go, oh, he looks great. You know, you wouldn't know unless you knew. So we're determined to get that information out there. What we were told at the hospital was the time has its, the brain has its own timetable. So now we wait. And I'm like, we wait, you know, I've never been patient. <laughs> so, um, and that's totally wrong information. It is absolutely wrong. You can totally facilitate healing in the brain. You can facilitate healing in the brain decades after injury. Um, so we did some things in the hospital. Um, some the doctors proved up, some they didn't know about, um, you know, and that was that. I had a bunch of doctors helping me with this. So we did progesterone and high dose fish oil there. And then since he's gotten home, we've been doing a lot of different things like neurofeedback, hyperbaric, but the latest thing we've been injecting his own stem cells that have been grown straight into his spine. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So I'm very excited about the potential of stem cells um, for everybody. I think this is going to be a game changer out there and so many, so many diseases. Yeah, stem cells are going to give hope to so many people for so many different kinds of, of health yeah. issues. It's, it's like at the Bulletproof Conference, I was there last year and they, have a, they had a lot of different speakers talking about stem cells and what they can do. <laughs> and it's just fascinating. And so... Obviously, you didn't leave behind your focus of fitness and nutrition behind when you wrote The Miracle <laughs> Mindset. Um, so how is that part of The Miracle Mindset? Is there uh, anything about fitness or nutrition or diet um, in that book? So there is some because here's what I did that I think people are like, what? You know, um, I realized when I was in the hospital with Grant, you know, here I am and I am not leaving my son, right? You know, if you look at, at what happens in hospitals, this is a teaching hospital and I'm gonna be with him. And so, in this was four and a half months he was in the hospital. So unless I was out on the road for the media tours, when my ex-husband came in, I was there. And so I'm not leaving the hospital, but I pay all the bills and I'm looking at this and in things like stem cell therapy, insurance is not covering these things. So I'm like, this book really has to go now. Like now it's not optional. Like success is not optional here. And it's, and I've got to be here for my son. Um, and I knew that in order to pull that off, in order to be a high performer and operate at that level, I couldn't get sick. You cannot walk into the ICU sick. You can't, they won't let you in. So I couldn't get sick. I was making life and death decisions. I had to do interviews in the at UCLA, they set up a little room for me to do my book interviews. So I mean, I'm just like full on every day, all day. And I went, you know what, my self care is going on top. So at the top of everything I did, I did ex what I call extreme self care. I was eating perfectly. I was running the hospital stairs for exercise. I was getting eight hours of sleep. And um, friends were bringing me in supplements for stress. Hyla Cass walked in with like a purse full of here. here you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, thank you. Um, and she made me homemade organic chicken soup. I mean, come on. Um, and Daniel and Tana Amon walked in. They cooked all this food. I'm like, so, you know, I just made sure I took absolutely amazing care of myself because I knew it was the only way that I was going to able to do this. And so I talk about that because, heck, if I could do that there, like anybody can use these techniques anywhere because, I mean, I was in a hospital, the least healthy place really in the you know, on the planet. Yeah. It's funny how <laughs> hospitals are so not. Isn't healthy. that funny? My one, dad of the first, uh, <laughs> one of the Grant's first words when he woke up was they gave him a hospital tray of food. Now I was, I had a Nutribullet in there. I was blending up stuff for him. Um, you know, <laughs> I was bringing in my own food. Vital Choice was sending salmon burgers over and he looks at this hospital food because I had a big sign up that said no insure, no crystal light, no hospital food. And he's like, disgusting. <laughs> like, <that's laughs> yeah, he's got the fight up. Yeah, my dad was in the hospital. He had esophageal cancer. And there's a McDonald's in the hospital. Like, this is what got them in the hospital in the first place. It's just mind-blowing to me. Yeah, it was. Well, there was one at Children's Hospital LA, too. There was a McDonald's. Yeah. That was crazy. Like, that's crazy. two blocks from me. That, that, you know, there were, there were, oh, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
I have fond memories of that place, though. They were amazing. Um, and they also had two Starbucks. The one hall pass I gave myself for my health was I'm like, you can have as much coffee as you want. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you say to people who feel like that they could never do what you did? They could never face that kind of adversity or who feel like they don't have what it takes to get through a major crisis in their lives? You know, it's it's interesting because I probably would have said the, I know I would have said the same thing, like looking at this, if a friend was going through it, I'm like, I can never do that. It's amazing what you can do when you have to, when your back's against the wall. Um, but early on, my son Grant is bipolar. And when we were, um, when he was six, I took him to a psychologist and he was explaining Grant's situation and what I would need to do. And I looked at him and I go, gosh, I'm not strong enough to do this. And he said, well, you better get strong enough because this is what you're facing. And I'm like, oh, you know, it's, <laughs> and I think that's really the answer is like, well, you better get strong enough because the one thing we know for sure is life is gonna throw challenges at you. The, and, and the differentiator between people I see who are loving their lives and living extraordinary lives and those who aren't is their ability to step up and face those challenges because we know for sure they're gonna happen. And, you know, when you look at it, I can't think of one thing in my life that's happened where I can look at it like one amazing thing, one beautiful thing and go, wow, that beautiful, amazing thing that happened to me. I learned so much from that. Right. I mean, there's we don't learn that way. We go through adversity and we we step up, we get stronger, we build resilience and we're better because of it. And not when we're in the middle of it. I'm not going to tell you when I was going through, you know, the middle of this with Grant. I'm like, oh, boy, I'm getting stronger and more resilient. I was not, <laughs> that was not happening. Yeah. You know, I was like, oh, you know, I was in action, just like one foot after the next and doing what I needed to do to keep myself together. But the reality is, when you go through these things, and when you step up, it is amazing what it will do for your life. And Grant, I interviewed him the other day and I asked him, I said, Grant, let's go back four and a half years and you have the option. You can cross the street or not. And what would you do? And Grant said, I would cross the street because I'm better because of it. And I'm like, wow. Wow. So where do people start? <laughs> what can they <laughs> do to start changing their mindset today and kind of get on this road to uh, improving their mindset so they can face adversity and, and face uh, challenges with less stress and grace that you know, that is inevitably going to happen in their life at some point. Yeah, and, you know, grace is a great word. I love that because that's really what it is. It's not about avoiding these things. It's about handling them. They're still going to be there, you know, but you'll learn how to handle them. And I've always loved in all of my books, I have these simple shifts little little shifts that I little hinges swing big doors. And so it's the same with miracle mindset. What I see, that's one of the simplest things that you can do. It was one of the things that I did when Grant was in the hospital that literally saved me. And after the fact, I was looking through all the science on resilience and gratitude and forgiveness and I'm like, ah, no wonder this saved me. I get it now. But I would had a habit that my very first mentor that I talked about who taught me mindset, had taught me, and she taught me to pull out a journal every single day and write down at least three things or people I was grateful for. And I like to journal and write a bunch of stuff, but at least, you know, some mornings I don't have 15 minutes to write everything, but I can always get a minute and write three things down, right? You can do this. And especially when my son was in the hospital and I was getting over there between 5.30 and 6 a.m., I wasn't gonna write, you know, a book every morning but I could write three things and it's the act of putting your pen to paper that I'd wake up kind of first thing in this hotel room, remember what the heck was going on, have a little fear seizure. And then I'd grab out the journal and write these three things. And it would just be like that gratitude just went and shoved out the fear, you know, and that saved me. And it's interesting because we've got people now in the miracle mindset Academy and it, within a week, everything's starting to shift for them just by doing that, that simple little thing of a minute a day, right? I mean, I, I call it like it's burst training for your mindset. 
Yeah, it's such a simple thing to do also. And I've heard this, uh, you know, there's a, a lot of people recommending that you do this because it's such a simple, effective tool uh, right. that, that anybody can do. And it just, it really does. It's shown in research to completely change the way you think and, and change your mindset. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So do you have any last words of encouragement for the listeners or advice? Yeah, you know, we call the documentary, You Are Stronger Than You Think. And I think uh, we're really never better than when we're challenged. And if you're listening to this, because I people have said, to me, oh, my gosh, you're like Superwoman. I go, I was scared every day. I still am scared every day. But actually, now I know that being scared is a good thing that fear goes away quickly when you lean into it. It's not it doesn't last long. It's like a 90 second feeling. And every time you do that, you build that resilience so you can handle things. And the bottom line is, as you do that, you are going to discover like we all do that you can handle these things and that you are stronger than you think. Yeah, I love that you say that your mindset is like a muscle. And you have to work on that because I think our, our brains are trained to look for problems in our environment. You know, mm -hmm. that's just how how we survive. And you have to retrain oh. that monkey mind to be thinking about gratitude and positive yeah. things and kind of redirect it or it's going to take over. You know, well, I negativity. have to put it into the metaphor. You know, I look at everything from a from a nutrition and fitness person's background. So I was like, OK, let me make sense of this. And so I came up with this metaphor is so your mindset's a muscle, which means you've got to be exercising it regularly, right? You would never say, oh, you know what, I think I'm just gonna not like do anything for my heart or my brain. I'll just kind of leave, leave my heart out of things. You know, it's like you've got to keep these things moving and exercising or they're done. So once you accept that your mindset's a muscle, I looked and I went, okay, I'm gonna like create CPR for your mindset, but you can do it on yourself. And that would be how you develop that courage so that you can handle anything, um, because we know you're going to be having to handle things. How to how to get that purpose dialed in so that you get unstuck in your life. You know, I see so many people who are just kind of comfortably dissatisfied, and then how to build the resilience so that you'll be able to have that bigger life. Because the bottom line is, the people who are playing the bigger life, they're they're having a bigger impact out there. They just have developed higher stress tolerance. They just have that resilience. It's it's not that things have been easy. In fact, usually they've had even more challenges than the average person. Yeah, well, uh, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I really appreciate it. And I wish you all the luck with your book launch. And I know that it's going to help so, so many people. And I'm excited that you did this documentary as well. Can you tell us just a minute about that? Yeah, you know, um, I always do public television shows with my books. And so as I was writing this book, I'm like, I should do a documentary on this. Cause it wasn't like, you know, public television shows, you usually stand up and do a lecture. I'm like, well, that would be kind of strange. And you know, what I didn't think about was, wow, if I do this book and documentary, I get to relive the entire thing over and over and over. Right. I still watch the documentary and cry. you know. Um, and I know the outcome, but um, the documentary it's kind of like, did you ever see the movie Rudy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So like, it's like Rudy meets The Secret meets like um, ER, the series ER. Okay. So <laughs> like all those things put together. But it it it's it's my specific story, but we've woven those lessons in. Of course, we go deeper in the book with them. And then that all leads into the, the Miracle Mindset Academy. And what was really interesting to me, someone asked me the other day, they said, oh, it must have been really healing to do the movie. I go, no, it wasn't healing to do the movie. It was actually, it actually was not healing at all. It actually kept bringing up all my stuff. And it wasn't until, and this is such a great lesson for all of us, it wasn't until I started teaching other people how to build their own Miracle Mindset. And the minute I started shifting into that focus, I, it healed me. It was like, you know, I, I, I could handle this watching the movie and talking about it and, and doing the book. And so that's been interesting and just shows like so often if you're in a challenging place, just reach out and help someone else. It's amazing how, how that gets you out of your own thing, right? Yeah, I used to suffer from depression for many years. And I kept reading all the depression books, self help books I was yeah. reading, just go help somebody else and get out of your mind. <laughs> you know, it's hard right. to just extend that to someone else. So change your focus. It's very simple. 
So uh, I have a question I, I like to ask all of my guests. What do you think is the most pressing health issue in the world today? Isolation. One of the things, you know, uh, brain injury has obviously become a big focus of mine. Um, and one of the biggest challenges Grant faced coming out of his brain injury was that he lost his community and he lost his friends. You know, he was a he was a junior in high school. You come out of a brain injury and you can't really talk. He had to learn everything all over again, who he was, how to tie his shoes, everything. And, you know, high school kids aren't hanging out for that. Right. So he basically all his friends left, went off to college. And, you know, he has me and my ex-husband and his dog and our other son. And that has really crushed me. And so that's one that I'm really committed to, to helping with is helping with this whole issue with social isolation. I think it is one of the biggest challenges we're going to face um, and we can fix it fairly easily, even with, you know, even with a lot of the online communities, they make a big difference. So I've been supporting, um, a foundation Kevin and Adam Pierce started. Kevin Pierce was that snowboarder who had a massive TBI and they started a retreat and also yoga. They're training yoga instructors, how to heal with, how to deal with brain injuries so they can bring brain injured people together in classes and have them do yoga and connect with each other. I'm like, that is so cool. So that is my big concern. And I think that, you know, I've always been in, made an effort to have a great community around me and also mentor people. And I think just if we can all reach out like that and look for those people who seem to be alone, will really help change things. It's, it's like eating your vegetables for your mindset. Mm, yes. Yeah, I love that. And wanting to the listeners more where they can uh, learn more about you and uh, the, the Mindset Academy and all the other things that you have going on. Well, my homepage will have everything, jjvirgin.com. We are launching the premiere um, of the movie. We're doing it online to start with before it goes to some of the other channels. And then with that, you'll also learn more about the, um, the book and the academy because we'll, we're doing a live training for that as well because the biggest thing I've realized, again, is that, you know, you can train your mindset and when you do, it will impact everything in your life. So jjvirgin.com and if you have show notes we can put links in for for you as well yes we'll do that for sure anyone listening okay. go to the blog post you'll see all the links to everything that jj offers at the bottom of the post and her social media and all that stuff well jj thank you so much for coming on the show i so appreciate it i was honored to have you on the podcast and i've been wanting to have a conversation with you for a long time so i'm really glad that you came on thank you i appreciate it and listeners want to learn more about me, you can go to live2110.com. You can check out my healing and detox program, mineralpower.com. Thank you so much for listening to the Live to 110 podcast.